Hey, this is James. This is going to be a Reaper tutorial. So first, let's sort of go over like, okay, the monitor effects. Like if you're looking at a fresh install, you 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 don't really see, you know, you don't see the button. There, the button should be here. What you need to do to sort of always see that button, open a new project tab. And when there's two project tabs, you see the button. And we don't have anything in there right now. But then you can right click on your project tab, empty space, and then you have this option that says always show project tabs. And then that way, even if you're just working in one tab, you you see the um, the project name and you see this monitor FX. So you want to download from my Git, the JGJS repository, just download this zip. And then you will open up your resource path and then let's just drag the the zip right into the effects folder for now. So that's how you would do that. Then let's open up the effects folder, scroll down to the zip, and then choose to extract here for Renoir or 7-zip. So let's uh, click on this, and then we want to browse to that, that plugin. Probably best to just search for hardware. So let's, uh, let's open that up. All right, and this opened up doc down here because I was doing something previously with it, but uh, it might open up floating in your case. All right, open up this track. Um, I've got my power amp off. You won't be hearing things from my speakers. Um, but basically, you know, you can use this big knob to control your monitoring levels. Just so we can see exactly what's going on here, let's put in a resurround here in the monitor FX path and oh yeah that's here let's do this let's make a bunch of channels here right we've got multiple hardware outputs and we want to switch and access them you know from the in our monitor FX path you know just go up 24 is a good number so you can see we have our metering here here I'm gonna, I'm gonna float the hardware plugin we can look at the Reese around. So what this is doing is this is routing, you know, from the master. You know, the master is by default routed into one two. So um, you know, I have if I have all three of these on, this is splitting the signal from the master into all of these pairs: my main pair, the phones, and the aux pair. Um, you can go to the I/O menu, and you'll see like this option um, if you. You can sort of scroll through this way, and if you switch, one of the, you you can see here on um, resurround that I am, you know, it's dynamically sort of switching the outputs. So you know, if you have, so like for example, you'll see that my phone's uh, right now is thirteen fourteen out, right? So we just want to switch the phones to thirteen fourteen. And I just got a blast of music in my ears. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> be careful. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, in the plugin. So we have a, a mute, which mutes everything. And we have a dim. Probably should have either switched the mute or the dim on before I uh, started messing with the routing for my phones here. Um, but you have a the your main input and then you have the three outputs you also have a Q input so I'm gonna show you what what uh, you can use the Q for in just a minute so okay let's talk about this plugin a little bit more so like you know if you're tracking late at night or whatever you just want your phones you know don't need your mains or whatever so you can just do it like this and this is just a big gain now and these sliders are just sort of like like if you want your phones cranked for example relative to your main output um you know you can just set that up and then you know use your master gain knob you you're controlling both and or let's say your aux is like you know you need it much lower or something like that okay so i want to talk about here i, I want to talk about hardware aliasing because it's very um uh, it's very useful in managing what you may have going on in the monitor fx so you go to options preferences go to audio and then um, you'll see here channel name mapping 
just click the, both of these boxes and then you want to edit the names. We're gonna edit, edit output channels right here. So you see this is all, you know, set up, you know, linearly one through 14. This is your hardware number and this corresponds to it, but we can change that here. And I don't use these SPDIA IF outputs because I don't have anything hooked up to them right now. So we can just remove those. So now our phones is 11 and 12. Um, and we're gonna keep all of this the same. But one thing you can do in this alias, ma in the mapping thing is that you can just add, you can just keep adding up to 64, actually. We're just gonna go to 24 for right now. Um, and you can have these, are, these are just kind of like dummy outputs. And then you can access these outputs in your monitoring FX chain, even if you don't have like multiple hardware outs, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, so like for example, um, let's set this one up and let's make it, um, let's say we want our uh, a dedicated sort of quote unquote output for Media, media Explorer. So Media Explorer left and we'll make this one Media Explorer right yeah so we just hit okay and let's hit apply and so you'll see that the aliases that we just um, put in here show up on the plugin pin list let's go back to our io we want to change this to 11 12 now now let's go to the media explorer actually and so you can go to the routing button and then um let's set it up so that it routes out to the media media explorer and then let's go back to the I.O. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, we'll double check our output here. Media Explorer is 13 and 14. And let's set this Q in to 13 and 14. So now, um, when we play something from the Media Explorer, if you're you know previewing some samples, you can set this Q on, right? And so now I'm getting... Um, the monitor, um, this output <clears throat> from the Media Explorer is now going in and it's going to my phones at the moment. Um, and then you can control the level with this. Um, your big knob, you know, controls the level as well. You'll see this little circle that's in between here. What it does is, is it links the phones and the queue on it, like it turns them both on and off at the same time. You can also have it unlinked. So like if I just wanted to, like for example, just have the samples that I'm listening to in the Media Explorer just, um, just come in through the queue, um, just come into my headphones and say like, you know, the, the master output of Reaper is just playing from the main. You can have this set up like this. You can see what the queue can be useful for. Also, you know, you can route the metronome so uh, now I want to uh, show the I have a script so let's go to the action list uh, let's load it up we're gonna have to find the um, find where your effects plugins where you know where this was installed uh, I have it sort of bundled in with the effects uh, just so it's easy to sort of package everything up sort of odd to look in your effects list for a script but that's there See, already I had already imported it in, but anyway, let's run that. Okay, you see, you get this big thing here. Let's float it. All right, so now this is very compact. You have, um, you know, your individual switches. This open button it actually opens the FX monitor FX chain to the to the plugin, and this way you can like confirm your settings. Um, and um, so you'll see like, you know, this, it just, it follow, everything follows here. Um, the Q information isn't on here, but you know, in normal use, um, you know, this is all I, I think all you really kind of need and just sort of a simple, this is just a simplified control for the, for the plugin. Um, so let's, um, let's dock it, right? But um, let's do this. Here, let's float. 
Let's float the master in a docker. Where'd it go? Wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's drag this over to here. For right now, I'm just going to move the mixer off the side. So let's, this big knob is in this docker here. So let's go to attach docker position right. And you see what happens is that and now you have this sort of split docker over here. So if you move a oh, docker to the right side and you already have something docked, that's how you set up this, this split on the right side. Um, it's a little bit hard to do. All right, I will actually want to put this on the bottom and this on the top. All right, this is a little, this is really so fiddly to mess with this stuff, but and it's actually kind of good that it didn't work out exactly right. So you can, I can kind of show you um, how to sort of like make sure it gets where you want it. Um, okay, so this, yeah, let's move the big knob over to down the bottom and the master mixer back into this. Okay, now we're gonna get it set up exactly like we want. Okay, so yeah, so now we have our master channel like floating over here and I have the monitoring uh, plugin script floating just below it. Not floating, but docked just below it. If you open the plugin, you can go to the options. You know, this, this GUI actually kind of follows any changes that you might make in here. You can sort of theme, uh, well, it doesn't follow the font, but you can theme um, this, uh, this plugin a little bit. There's some presets like five through 15 are kind of like preset things. So there's presets one through four allow you to put in a, a color. So it's in hex, so you can look up a code. Uh, but 232323 is just sort of like a grayish kind of thing, and it matches the Reaper 5 theme pretty well. That's the plugin, and that's this little, creates this little widget here with the script that's very easily dockable. And now you have this nice little compact monitor FX control. Um, so yeah, that's all for this tutorial. I'm going to go over some more stuff in the monitor effects chain because um, you can do a lot of stuff here because you have you know, all these channels and then with your the fact that you can alias and have all these different um, outputs that aren't actually outputs, but you can you can use them and, and just take, uh, take advantage of all the routing options that you can have in the monitor effects. Um, so I think, um, you know, I wanted to do this tutorial because I, I, some people may not even know that this thing's there or like really how to use it or, um, but yeah, so there you go until next time, James.